Thank you, Pam, and a warm virtual welcome to all. As mentioned, my name is Matt Roy, and I'm the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Career and Civic Engagement at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. My role is, is to oversee the operations of the Career Center and the Ladue Center for Civic Engagement. I am also a management professor. I've been asked to speak about the empowering nature of experiential education for, for students, faculty, and community. Experiential education is a hands-on learn is hands-on learning and typically consists of internships and community-based learning, also referred to as service learning. I will approach this task by telling you my story, and hopefully you'll see how experiential education changed my life and the lives of my students. I'm sure you recognize that over the years there have been hundreds of projects, but in the interest of time, I will share a few examples of what can be done. I grew up in the south end of Fall River, the 10th of 11 children and the first to go to college. I went to Durfee High School and then here to Bristol Community College. This was in 1983 and so half of my classes were downtown near the Omri building and half were here on Ellsbury Street. I distinctly remember one day walking across this campus and, have, and having an aha moment. I stopped, I looked around, and in that moment I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life on a college campus. I just felt whole. Thinking of, think about it, most college campuses have a beautiful physical setting, but more importantly, you are surrounded by people who want to learn. Colleges are places where growth always happens. In my experience, that growth can be exponential if we focus less on teaching and more on learning. That's the link to experiential education. The irony here is that my message is that we have to send our students off campus and into the community in order to maximize their learning and community benefit. I'm going to start by talking about internships and then I'll move then into community-based learning. I was a finance major as an undergraduate, and I did two internships in college, one at a community economic development corporation and one at a bank. I remember being intimidated to speak up in meetings or even anxious when the phone rang. I learned how very different the culture was in those two settings and how culture drove behavior. It was those internships that got me my first professional job after college. That job was at the Raytheon Corporation as a financial analyst. I don't recall the salary, but I remember it being very well, a very well-paying job at the time. Recently, I read a study that students that complete an internship are 50% more likely to get a job offer upon graduation and earn on average $15,000 more per year in that first job. Let me repeat for, for emphasis. 50% more likely to have an offer in hand upon graduation and $15,000 more per year. Students, please try to get an internship. Businesses, please sponsor students in paid internships in your organization. They will inject fresh ideas into your organization and lower your hiring cost. When I was a student here, many of my classes were taught in a traditional manner what I refer to as chalk and talk. I worked two jobs to pay for my schooling and didn't own a car at the time. I either walked or bum drives or took public transportation. Perhaps the most important learning experience I had was outside of the classroom. I used to volunteer in a parish soup kitchen, mostly washing dishes. In the early 1980s, times were tough and demand was high in the soup kitchen. Consequently, I noticed the shelves to my left when I was at the sink doing dishes were getting very low. There, was much, there wasn't much food to feed the many hungry patrons. I was friendly with many Durfee High School basketball players at the time, former players. This was when Durfee was a basketball powerhouse. So I learned, I leaned on my network and I organized a charity basketball tournament consisting of three Durfee State Championship teams and one team made up mostly of New England Patriots. I was a business major 
and I lear learned more about logistics, marketing and promotion, recruitment and finance from that project than from any of my classes that I had taken. I also felt a sense of accomplishment when I saw the shelves restocked because of my efforts. I raised awareness about hunger in, my, in our community and I raised money for the soup kitchen. Most importantly, it was an empowering learning experience. I learned that I could make a difference. Now fast forward a few years. Now I have a PhD in management and I'm teaching business strategy classes in the Midwest. I haven't forgotten my experience with the charity basketball tournament, so I developed my classes as community-based learning. Students are consultants working on local projects. Many of those projects were for nonprofits, and we even did one or two for the Green Bay Packers. One semester, we were consulting for Schneider National Trucking. That's the largest trucking company in the world. You know them. They're the orange trucks that you see on the highway. They had a big problem with truck driver turnover, 100% turnover. So for every truck driver they hired and trained, they lost one. It's, it, it's a hard life and a lonely life, so it was difficult to keep truck drivers. My students group, groups met with focus groups of managers and truck drivers and devised different solutions for this problem. One group of students developed a profit sharing plan for truckers that stayed longer period of, periods of time. Another group suggested that we share the driving and cut down the loneliness. Often, teams of drivers were husband and wife teams. Both of these solutions saved the company millions of dollars in employee turnover, with some of those savings actually going back to the drivers through the new profit sharing plan. This project and many others helped students realize that they could develop real solutions to real problems. Fast forward again. I left that school in the Midwest and moved back home. I have now been at UMass Dartmouth for 21 years, but when I came back, I decided I wanted to make a difference, and the best way to make a difference was through breaking down the ivory tower and sending my students out in the community to work on real problems with community partners who would also teach them real world applications. I was teaching the leadership classes and I would challenge my students to find something in the community that they wanted to change and go and do it. The premise being that leaders are change agents and that we all lead when we serve others. One student group discovered that there were students experiencing food insecurity and opened a food pantry on the UMass Dartmouth campus. Another group wanted to combat a blood shortage at the time and had a blood drive that was so successful that the American Red Cross asked them to develop a manual on how to have a successful campus blood drive. The Red Cross shared that manual with hundreds of colleges around the country and it was used for many years. These students left a legacy of positive change that, and they were in, in also changed in that process. There are dozens of other projects with similar outcomes for both students and community. Fast forward an, another few more years and I was given a much bigger opportunity by Chancellor Emeritus Jean McCormick. That opportunity was to start the Center for Civic Engagement and to train faculty in best practices in community-based learning. I have trained between 125 and 150 UMass Dartmouth faculty and also 10 or 12 Bristol Community College faculty over the years. This has resulted in community-based projects involving hundreds of organizations and thousands of students each year. Projects that have resulted in more equitable bus routes, new websites, concerts and fashion shows, teaching children about biology, reading and foreign cultures, or the redesign of local libraries. There is no discipline upon which community-based learning cannot be done and done well, with very successful outcomes. We, ser we survey students and community partners each year. 
and the results are extremely positive. Student surveys overwhelm overwhelmingly show that they are not only learning the application of class content, but soft skills like communication and teamwork. The statistics are impressive, but they don't capture the most important aspect of community-based learning. Perhaps the biggest thing that we can give our students, students like Matt Roy, is a paradigm change. You see, most of us in the south coast of Massachusetts grow, grow up trying to make ends meet. We grow up knowing what we don't have. Maybe we don't have a, a nice house or a car or fancy sneakers or in some instances enough food to eat. Community-based learning helps students to see their place in the world differently. It helps them to understand that they have gifts to give and that, more, and that the more that they learn, the more that they will have to share. It's a win, win, win. A win for the student when that paradigm change happens, a win for the faculty because students will retain what they learned, and a win for the community-based organization because a project was completed or a problem was solved. Experiential learning changed my life. It helped me to realize that education does not reside on a piece of paper or in the letters after my name. It is not meant to be locked away in an ivory tower. Learning is meant to be shared with the broader community. Education is meant to make this world a tiny bit better place for all. Thank you, Bristol Community College, for starting me on this journey.